Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about photography. Photography is probably my favorite module that we offer with the steam engine, and since everything right now kind of makes it really difficult for the steam engine to come out, I figured I would go over a really cool guide on how to use your phone for photography and to go over the different types of cameras you can use. So the two basic types of actual cameras, not the one that's built into your phone, would be a DSLR and a point and shoot. A DSLR camera is just basically your fancy camera that has a removable, attachable lens, and the lenses can be very big, very long, very short, just depends on the need of the photographer. Whereas point and shoot cameras are ones that have everything built into it. Most of them are completely automated. There's not really any settings that you can really change other than maybe changing it to a black and white instead of a full color photo. And you just look at the direction you want and you click the button. So point and shoot. Phone cameras are more like a point and shoot camera. You don't have a lens that you can attach. That being said, I don't want to discount point and shoot camera. Wild DSLR cameras are really great if you're trying to do any kind of fast photography, if you want those really gorgeous images with the blurred out backgrounds, if you want to catch the snow falling, that kind of stuff. It's worth sinking money into, but you do have to be aware that it could be anywhere between 500 to thousands and thousands of dollars. They are much more fragile than a point and shoot or a phone camera. And they also require extra lenses that you have to purchase, which the lenses themselves can be thousands of dollars. Whereas with a phone and a point and shoot camera, they're super great for beginners. They're a lot cheaper. Some of the point and shoot cameras you can get are waterproof. They do take really good photos. They charge quickly and easily. They last a long time. They're pretty good for close-ups. They're not great for zooming in or taking photos of things far away. But if you want a really good photo of your pet or yourself or maybe your family, point and shoot cameras are gonna work just as well. Some basic things to just remember when you're taking photos, steady hands, steady shot. Better photos come from slower movements and patience. Blurry photos, not fun. If you take a photo and you move really quickly while it's still snapping with the little shutter sound, you're gonna have a blurry photo. No one wants a blurry photo. So it's better to be super patient and wait and double and triple check that it actually took a good photo. Typically what I like to do is take between three to five photos of one specific thing that I'm interested in before moving on to ensure, especially if it's something that moves like a child or a pet, that you're gonna have that one photo that's really good and crisp. Another thing you need to be aware of is lighting. You want it in between bright and dark lighting. Use shadows and natural shade during sunny days to help you soften your photos. And during evening or night, use different settings on the camera as well as lamps and reflective boards to give you that extra lighting you need for those photos to pop. You can see right here, these two photos have too much bright light. It's kind of washed out. It's not super great. It's almost a little hard to look at. Whereas this other photo is just right. For focus, you don't want to focus too much on your subject, but you also want to be close enough where the pictures interest people. If you have it too far away and it's just kind of like this bush sitting there, not really going to be that interesting. If you zoom in too much on point and shoot and on phone cameras, it's either going to depixelate and make the photos grainy or it will not focus on what you want at all. You want to get it just right. There's a sweet spot on zooming in. Most of the time what you have to do is also walk much, much closer to whatever the subject is. You want the subject of your photo to shine. Are you actually taking a picture of a bush or something on the bush? What do you want to stick out? Having it where you're focusing closely on something is really gonna make whatever it is that you want to be the center of that picture to really stand out. The best way to do this is to use the rule of third. The rule of third states that if you put a grid of nine squares over a photo, your eye is naturally drawn to one square up and one square in. As you can see in both of these photos, one square down, one square in is the natural place where your eye can focus. Obviously that's not gonna be the same with every single photo such as portrait, but if you're trying to do something that's more scenic, panoramic, landscape, such as this where you wanna have a big amount of what's called white space, which is all the area that's around what the subject of your photo is. You want your subject to fit within the rule of thirds so that people don't just look at it and go, oh, that's a cool picture, but, whereas they would look at it and go, wow, that's a really good photo. There's just something about that that just naturally is very pleasing to the human eye. I hope you guys have gotten inspired to do your own photography and to have fun. Try it out with your phone, try it out with your tablet. If you've got the money, go buy a camera. If your family member has a camera, go ask if you can borrow that and go out and just find what you like to take pictures of. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.